Another mitzvah without mazal is Shabbat. Shabbat. Many Jews, they love Hashem. They even talk to Hashem in a time of problem. They eat kosher. They donate money to all kinds of good causes. They, you know, they're nice people. They're friendly. They do chesed. They bring people to their home. They help the poor. They do a lot of nice things in their life, but they don't want to keep Shabbat. Some of them go to work in a business. Some of them, they don't open the store, but they like to watch television, to do, to, you know, to drive, go on here, go to the beach, whatever they like to do. Most of these Jews, they have no idea what they are doing. How do I know? From experience of 20 years, almost every Jew I speak to really serious about Shabbat, very, very, very high chance that he becomes Shomer Shabbat immediately. Not the next Shabbat, immediately, the following Shabbat. He cannot think about violating one more Shabbat in his life. What changed? He's 40 years old. He's, he heard a lot of rabbis in his life. He heard, he read stories. He has a religious cousin or uncle. Almost everyone has. I'm sure he heard about Shabbat a few times in his life. Why I never shocked him? Until he gets to me, I shock him. I, go, I make him go home cry. Why? Because I show him everything, not 10%. When he hears 10% here, 15% there, it doesn't make an impact. When you go from A to Z, he said to himself, if I only knew these things, I never dare to violate Shabbat one second of my life. Let me give you some of it. Some of it. Let me explain to you, first of all, what Shabbat is. Some people think Shabbat is a day of rest. I work very hard all week in the farm. I need a day to rest, otherwise I'll collapse. The answer is wrong. Even if a multi-billionaire who rests all his life with his cigar and getting 10 by his pool and run his businesses with remote control, he has to keep Shabbat. So you see, it's nothing to do with physical work. Even people who are handicapped, they cannot move anyway, they cannot work out. They have to keep Shabbat. Someone is bar mitzvah, he's not going to work. He's just learning in school. He has to keep Shabbat. Ladies that take care of children, there's nothing extra than any other lady, religious, not religious, they all raise children. She has to keep Shabbat. Someone that has basically uh, all the free time in the world still has to keep Shabbat. If he say instead of Shabbat, I'm going to keep Tuesday as a day of rest, it doesn't count anything. He has to keep Shabbat. Now, what is the point of keeping Shabbat? The Torah says, this is what the Torah says, and the nation of Israel observed the Sabbath, to make the, the Sabbath an eternal covenant between me and the nation of Israel. It's a sign for eternity that I made the world in six days, and in a seventh day I rested, I made it holy. It's a spiritual holy day, and that's the agreement between me in my nation, you want to be my son, you want to be in my nation, you want to come to the place that I promised the righteous Jews when you die, you must keep this agreement, this covenant. And if you don't keep it, what does the Torah say? Who knows? Twelve times it repeats in the Torah, more than anything else. There's only one thing in the Torah that is mentioned more times to love the converts and to help them, those who converted to Judaism, not to take advantage of them, not to deceive them, to love them, not to hate them, all kinds of things. But other than the converts, no other mitzvah repeats more time than Shabbat in the Torah. No other sin in the Torah is bigger than the sin of breaking Shabbat. The biggest punishment in life, in this world, and in the after, afterlife, is for someone who doesn't keep Shabbat. The punishment of Mechalel Shabbat is a lot worse than the punishment of the murderer. Murderer that keeps Shabbat is a very, very horrible person. He's a big sinner. He's a murderer. I don't have to tell you what a murderer is. But when he dies, he's a Jew. A very bad Jew, but a Jew. Mechalel Shabbat, the nicest person on earth, everyone kiss him because he's so charming and friendly and nice and generous. But he's not keeping Shabbat, he's not a murderer, he doesn't offend people, 
He doesn't speak bad about people. His house is open for the poor. A fantastic human being. But he drives the car on Shabbat. Even to shul. Goes to shul with the car. He, when he dies, he gets a stamp that is 100% a goy and cannot be buried in a Jewish cemetery. That's the law. He has to, they have to make a, war, a fence. They have to bury him on the other side of the fence. They cannot bury him with the Jews. He has to be buried just like they bury the goyim. You have to understand that. And in his lifetime, he's considered also 100% a goy. Now, who here knew that the violator of Shabbat in the eyes of God is 100% Mustafa that doesn't keep Shabbat? He's like him 100%. Who knew it? Please me, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just telling you the truth as it is. You have to appreciate that you had the opportunity to hear it here because you won't hear it anywhere else. There's not, I don't think there's another speaker in the world who speak those things in the public, maybe one-on-one. I, I did not hear about anybody who speaks like this, telling the people exactly what the Torah says, not making it beautiful and sugar-coating it. You understand? Only saying the truth. Let me tell you a little bit more of the truth. If we have nine people in a shul, Shomrei Shabbat, Tfilat Yom Kippur, Tfilat Neila, we're about, we open the Echal, the most important hour of the year. The entire year depends on this hour now, before Yom Kippur is over, the last hour of Yom Kippur when it gets, when it gets dark. We have nine Nine people Shomrei Shabbat and 5,000 Jews Mechalelei Shabbat in a shul. But only nine Shomrei Shabbat were not allowed to pray in public. No Kaddish, no Sefer Torah, no Kedusha, no nothing. No Birkat Kohanim, nothing. Why? It's not a kosher minyan. It's an avera, it's a sin. The minyan not just became a sin. We're making the name of Hashem for vain. It's, we're violating the rules of Shulchan Aruch. So we need ten Shomrei Shabbat to take out the Sefer Torah. According to the Shulchan Abruch, the Jewish Book of Law, in seven different chapters, it repeats the same thing, no contradiction. Mechalel Shabbat areu kegoi lechol davar. Mechalel Shabbat is 100% like a goy. If he touched the wine, the wine is not kosher anymore. You cannot make kiddush on it. If he made Kiddush, all the people who heard the Kiddush have to do again Kiddush. It doesn't count for them. He cannot make them go out in the mitzvah. If he was a witness in your wedding, you're not married. You have to get remarried. Why? Because only one witness was Shomer Shabbat. The other one wasn't. And a goy cannot be a witness in a wedding. If you gave him a million dollar loan and you decided that you want to charge him $10,000 interest every month, Allowed or not allowed? Jews allowed to take interest from another Jew? A Jew that takes interest from another Jew, his punishment is that when the Mashiach would come and all the dead righteous Jews would rise from the grave, like the Prophet promised, those who charge interest from another Jews cannot resurrect in the resurrection of the dead. Horrible punishment, horrible. But if he was Michalel Shabbat, no problem at all. You can charge him interest just like you charge Ahmed or Chris. Why? The Torah say, Le'achi chalot ashich. You're not allowed to charge interest from your brother that keeps Shabbat like you, but to the Goy, mitzvah to take interest. And since he's considered 100% the Goy in the eyes of God, the law in Ilchot Ribit, you can open Yalkut Yosef, Ilchot Ribit, Alacha Hei, Mutar Le'alvot Le'mechalel Shabbat Be'faresia Be'ribit. No problem. The problem is what would happen if you become religious in the middle of the loan. <laughs> then you get stuck. You're not allowed to charge him interest. That's why we don't do it. But just to show you what is the status of Mechalel Shabbat in the eyes of God. The punishment of a murderer is death by sword. Very fast and very short way to kill people. Shh, it's over. One second. The person doesn't even feel pain. Hop, and it's over. Halel Shabbat is a very, very humiliating ceremony. It's, first of all, much worse way to die. It's stoning, horrible. And they have to make him wear a special pyjama, and they take him to a hill, 
the all nations going around, horrible embarrassment. They take him to a place, and I don't want to even go to the rest of the details because I don't want to ruin your night here. But you have to know, if God say that the punishment that he wants someone who doesn't keep Shabbat to be worse than the punishment that a murderer should get, what does it tell you as intelligent people? I'm sure all of you are smart and intelligent. If the creator of the world wrote in a Torah that a Jew that doesn't keep his Shabbat deserves the worst punishment that the Torah is, even bigger than a murderer, what does it tell you? That that's definitely a horrible, horrible crime. So even if a person hates to keep Shabbat, maybe it's not normal, I don't know. It's very, very nice to keep Shabbat. You sit with your family, children, neighbors, brother, cousin, grandmother, everyone comes to the table like it used to be in the last generation. Everyone in the table, Shabbat, eating, enjoying, singing, eating again, seven floors like a Bukharian wedding, you know, another floor, and all Shabbat eating and singing and snoring and coming to the shul hearing music. What's wrong, what's wrong with that? And you become kosher Jew, you're 100% a Jew, and when you die, you have a share in heaven, just like all the thousands and thousands of righteous Jews who pass from this world, Shomrei Shabbat.